Okay, so after the repetition, we start with the next chapter, next big topic, generating Nemnon numbers, and now the standard normal distribution, because this is a really important distribution. Um, so the question is now for, for today's lectures for all the parts and also for the next lecture is how to generate samples from a standard normal, ran from a standard normal random variable. Um, what do we know about the standard normal random variable? Well, we have this expression here for the commutative distribution function. We know its density, it's 1 over square root 2 pi, and then this exponential here and the cumulative distribution function we get by integrating from 0, inf zero infinity to x. This is not really explicit, but nevertheless we can uh, um, apply ITM at least in an approximate way. So that's one approach. We approximate the inverse of this function here. The next approach is box muller method and also there's another method both are closely related. That's Massalia's polar method. Cigarette method, which we will do next week, is the method which MATLAB does. So Boxmala, Massalia well, are classical methods, but cigarette is actually what MATLAB is doing. So let's start with the approximate ITM. And you might wonder, so sometimes people make a big fuss about the um, that this is only not, uh, not an explicit expression, we have no real expression for it, etc, 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 but um, nevertheless we can apply the ITM to this, at least approximately. And here's a, a quote from, from the book of Glazerman, um, which, which somehow summarizes um, a common common point of view or common misperception. So at first sight this may seem infeasible to approximate uh, the inverse of phi. But what we are doing all the time is we are using logarithm, sine, cosine, etc. And in particular the logarithm. The logarithm is also implemented typically as an um, numerical inverse of the exponential function. And the exponential function is also not implemented in an exact way typically. So the inverse, the inverse uh, cumulative distribution function of the standard normal distribution and the logarithm are somehow the same, at least on a, on a, on a, on a meta level. So neither can be computed exactly in general, but both can be approximated with sufficient accuracy for applications. So this is really a, a method which is useful and also used. And the up-to-date variants, the beastly mirror springer algorithm, you can find in the book of Glazerman. If you use norm inf and MATLAB, that's exactly this algorithm. Um, I don't want to discuss this algorithm here in detail. I only want to illustrate what's what's behind such algorithms. And for this we go a bit back in time, so the approximation of, of phi and the inverse of phi is really a classical uh, problem. So if, for example in this classical handbook of mathematical function, which was the uh, Wikipedia of the 60s, 70s and 80s, so you can find a lot of stuff on the approximations of this function here. Um, why only this function? This is the error function. Well, we don't have variance 1, but variance square root of 2, so we have only um, 2 squared here. Or oh, it's not variance, uh, variance square root of 2, it's 1 over square root of 2. Oh, it's a different standardization. And we have the integral from 0 to x. Why only from 0 to x? Um, yeah, from minus infinity to 0, this value is known. It's just 1 half, and we have symmetry properties. So it's enough to study this approximation of the error function, which corresponds to, um, which gives us the um, probabilities of a normal random variable with mean zero and variance one over square root of two. Okay, so how to compute this approximately? Um, well, first here is one, one, one page of Abramovich de Goon, this is a classical book, and here's also a copy of, of page where we have all these different kind of approximations. Here's one with a few terms, here's a one with few more terms, and so on. And well, it has to be explicitly implementable, that's why you see all these ex really explicit numbers here. Uh, so I would like to discuss this one here in detail. 
This is on the next slide, and that's a simple approximation of the error function. So first of two, we have this auxiliary variable t. t is 1 over 1 plus px. p is this number, x is our input, input the argument. And we also need to compute e to the power minus x squared. And then we need to compute this expression here with a1t minus a2t squared plus a3t to the power 3. Then we multiply it with e to the power minus x squared and subtract it from 1 and then we get this expression which we can evaluate as, a, as h of x. And our error function is approximately h of x and it's exactly h of x plus this error term and this error term can be uh, bounded. So the error term is less or equal than 2.5 times 10 to the power minus 4. And here you can see all the uh, explicitly given numbers. So we can compute an approximation with um, three digits accuracy basically, which is not much, but this is an illustration. So if we go back here, we have 10 to the power minus 7, so this gives six digits. So there are really good approximations available. Okay, this gives us the error function, but actually we need the inverse error function. Well, for this, you can. In MATLAB you can use F0, that's a numerical algorithm method which gives you the, inver the, uh, the inverse of the error function or of any function that you plug in approximately. So we approximate um, the error function numerically, so we can also approximate the inverse numerically. For example, you can use F0, but one of the really standard tools, if you want to do it yourself, it's Newton's method. And, well, you had this in, an intro in introduction into numerics, and here's a small recap. So, Newton's method is a recursive zero-finding algorithm for differable functions, based on this linearization here. Differentiable, well, the error function and our approximation is um, differentiable, so that's okay. And Newton's method is really simple, so instead of looking for a zero of f of x, we are looking for zero of this linearization. So we fix a point x bar, then we linearize, so f of x is approximated as f of x bar plus f prime of x bar times x minus x bar, and then we do not look for the zero of this, but of this. So this is this line here. And if f prime of x bar is not zero, we can just invert this, and can solve this for x, and this gives us this recursion here. So the next approximation is the given approximation minus f of the given approximation divided by f prime of the given approximation. And we need to start with some initial guess. Okay, that's Newton method and further properties and in particular when to stop, how to stop this iteration, just look up your introduction into numeric script or book or uh, consult Wikipedia or any other thing you like. So that's Newton's method for, 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 for zero finding here. We want to invert. So we want to invert h. So, well, we can use Newton methods for this because inversion can be written as a, as a zero finding problem. So the function for which uh, we want to find the zero f is now h of x minus the given set for which we want to evaluate the inversion. So in this way you can approximate the error function and also the inverse error function and in this way we can do approximate ITM. <coughs> 